Yo, what's up, everyone? My name is Trickhouse from NASCAR on MDK. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Lines. Now, this is going to be a post race, small little post race edition, because I'm going to recap what took place in today's E NASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational event from the virtual home sim Miami Speedway. And wow, uh, what a race that was. So, first off, I got to say, before we get into it, what a job by Fox. I mean, they really went off trying to make this as realistic as possible. Uh, they had Clint Boyer as an interest reporter. They had Mike Joy and Jeff Gordon calling the race in a social distancing type of situation. You had Mike Joy and his monitors, and then you had Jeff Gordon and his monitors very separated from each other. Uh, some parts I felt like were a bit unnecessary. Like they had uh, a, a guy give a, a prayer before the race, and they had a person sing the national anthem. I, I get it. You know, it's what you, they do in real life, but I don't think you need to do that for the eye racing. I don't think I don't think you need to do that. Just do the gentleman start your engines and then jump into it. But regardless, whatever. Graphics were nice, a little add touch to it. I mean, it was really just it was a broadcast that felt real. It felt like real life. So great job by NASCAR on that. Now for the race itself, it was uh, it was interesting, but it was a complete wreck fest. So. Heading into this race, NASCAR gave out a rule that says you can have one time a fresh repair, meaning, let's say if you get into a crash, you can for one time only come onto pit road and basically just get a new car. Basically, it happened with a lot of drivers because there was a lot of accidents. I think um, the first 60 or 70 laps, we had seven or eight cautions, and this would come you know, every two or three laps, every five laps. I don't think there was at one point in the first 70 to 80 laps during this race where we had more than... 15 laps under green. It was that chaotic. There's so many accidents. There was one time, uh, now there was one time, in the middle of three and four, Jimmy Johnson, who was caught up in an earlier accident, apparently, according to him, he thought it was under yellow. Apparently, it was not. Let's take a look right here. So, you had Byron and Hamlin battling for a position, and all of a sudden, Jimmy Johnson just comes by from out of nowhere in the middle, slow as hell, then hits Garrett Smithley and spins, collects his teammate, Alex Bowman, and a bunch of other drivers to cause a massive accident. It was one of the funniest, but yet just embarrassing things I think I've ever seen. This came from a seven-time champion. Uh, it remind me, reminded me of Kevin LePage in 2008 Talladega when he just came up to the field in the middle of nowhere and just wrecked everyone. So, But at least, unlike Kevin LePage, Johnson took blame for it, where LePage just acted like it wasn't his fault, but whatever. It was so funny. It was even trending on Twitter uh, for a good portion of the, of the, of the day, so... It was it was a lot of fun. You know, it wasn't any serious into it. Like it was serious, but it wasn't like, you know, oh my god, this could be big for NASCAR or like if they mess us up. Oh no, it was just there for fun, and I think that's the main point of this whole event. Was well, just to have fun, to give something to the fans. You know, because with no NASCAR gonna go on until May third or May 9th, might as well give something to the fans to keep them entertained, and that's what they did today. So there was a lot of crashes, lots of crashes going on, but throughout the first 70, 60 to 70 laps, we had some leaders. We had William Byron up front, Gary Smithley, Timmy Hill, Dale Earnhardt Jr., uh, Chase Briscoe, and those drivers were up near the front of the pack. Byron then got into an accident with his teammate, Alex Bowman, which, by the way, Bowman was gold on Twitter, absolute gold gold on Twitter. Uh, it was uh, posting on you know, tweets of having his dog taking over for the race, and was he was just absolute jokes over on Twitter. So, again, this was just a lot of fun in this race. You had Johnson pulling a LePage move, and you had Bowman tweeting just <laughs> some random stuff that just made it that much funnier and made, it more, made me more of a fan because he actually has a personality, I'm starting to realize now. But it was overall a really, really cool race. Now, one thing that I will point out, and this is uh, not confirmed. We don't know wh how real this is, but apparently, according to I want to say Garrett Smithley stream or to some driver stream, Fox said because of how many cautions that were going on, Fox was getting annoyed, and that they said from now on we're not going to throw a caution if there's a crash outside the top five, and they they follow those they and they basically did what they said because there was two or three accidents that took place near the mid park to the back end of the field that were real accidents like uh especially one entering turn one between Kyle Larson and Anthony Alfredo no caution so it seemed like Fox is getting annoyed they I don't know if they enjoyed the racing but they were annoyed that there were so many cautions happening but good that they didn't throw those cautions because those 20 laps were so much fun to watch you had Smithley Hill those two drivers we thought were gonna decide okay those two drivers are gonna decide who wins this race you had Smithley in front and Hill behind Hill was able to catch up to Smithley, but he was not able to pass him. He could not do anything about it. Then all of a sudden, 
Jr. starts coming along with Chase Briscoe. I don't know if they probably just had fresh tires, but they just started chugging along. They were about a second behind when the green flag came out. They got up, and Smith and Hill got up to a massive lead. Ch Jr. and Briscoe just erased that lead, and it started to become a four-car field, then even a five- and six-car field. Jr. was able to catch up to Hill, pass Hill, uh, no, actually, uh, before that, though, Hale was able to get by Smithley, but then right behind those guys was Junior and Briscoe. Junior was able to get by uh, Smithley, and then was able to get by Hale with under 10 or so laps to go. And then Briscoe followed suit. But then out of nowhere, with five to go, Hamlin comes by, starts passing Hill, passing Smithley, pass uh, Briscoe, and now he's in contention with Junior to win this race. And Junior was, he held Hamlin, Hamlin at bay, uh, Hamlin had a few uh, tries in the, off of the off of turn two and onto the back straight. Able to get side by side with him, but Junior just got the run on the high lane to keep Hamlin behind in second. Until the final lap came, when Junior Junior at the start finish line pulled away from the wall, let a lane open for Hamlin. Hamlin then drove it into turn one, was able to get side by side with Junior off of turn two, and then entered the four. Hamlin stayed on that outside lane. Uh, Junior way down low when they came off a of turn before it, they made contact Junior nearly spins it was able to save it in the grass and Hamlin was able to go on to win the inaugural E-NASCAR iRacing Pro Invitational Series second place was Junior third was uh, Timmy Hill fourth was Chase Briscoe and fifth was uh, Garrett Smithley and uh, again those 20 laps were phenomenal if you guys want to check it out again the live reactions you can just skip it to the near the end it was really so much fun to watch that race and yeah now i'm very very interested to see, you know what will the next race will be i have a feeling it's probably going to be texas because i think nascar is going to do this invitational uh for tracks that have been postponed so maybe actually i don't even think even atlanta though but i expect you know texas bristol richmond talladega uh dover you know charlotte though though well not charlotte but those races that were postponed i expect those to be the next races to be on the schedule um, no personal points, but all for fun, and it was a fun race to watch. Um, I don't know what Fox thinks about the race, though, because, again, they uh, again there's a report that they were annoyed with the amount of caution to it. Hopefully, they're able to broadcast the next race. Uh, but I'm very intrigued. What will the numbers look like? Based on social media interaction, it was a smash. It was a hit. It was a smash hit. But in terms of TV numbers, how's that going to look? Because... Um, I'm not sure. I know uh, iRacing has been broadcasted on TV before with NBC, but I'm not sure what the numbers are exactly. But this is a race that involves cup drivers. It involves Jimmy Johnson, Earnhardt Jr., Kyle Busch. It involves cup drivers. So I'm intrigued to see what will the numbers look like. I mean, I think anything, if it was 100,000, I think that would be pretty good. I mean, I don't know. There's, I don't really know what the standards are for you know, online racing numbers because it's never been, you never had something like this before with all these cup drivers in it, so. But I think overall it's going to be a success in terms of the TV numbers, I feel like. Uh, it was obviously a smash hit in terms of social media engagement. I mean, there were people that weren't even involved in NASCAR. They don't, they don't care about NASCAR. They were even tweeting about the race, so. Clearly, from an online perspective, it was a smash hit, but I'm very intrigued to see what the TV numbers are. But that's all my thoughts on this race. Very chaotic, but the first 80 laps were absolutely a madness, but the last 20 laps were beautiful to watch. <laughs> uh, but what do you guys think of the race? What do you guys think of the whole broadcast as a whole? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Tell, tell me in the comment section down below. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. But that's it for me. Until next time, my name is Jake Austin NASCAR on MDK. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you guys in the next video.